in the heart of a bustling metropolis where dreams are born and adventures await, a young traveller named Grace Mullane embarked on a journey of a lifetime. Grace, a vivacious and adventurous soul from England, set foot on the shores of New Zealand, a land known for its breathtaking landscapes and warm-hearted people. She was drawn to the rugged landscapes, the dense forests and the crystal clear waters. But she was not alone. Grace's adventure would captivate hearts, and her story would later become a symbol of tragedy and hope. Grace Emmy Rose Mullane was born on December 2nd, 1996, in Wickford, Essex, to her parents Gillian and David Mullane. She was the youngest of her three siblings. She was known to be a lovely, outgoing, fun-loving, family-orientated daughter and loved creativity and arts, and being that, the family was so close with her. Grace kept in daily contact with her siblings and parents, even whilst she had been away at the University of Lincoln, where she studied advertising and marketing. In 2018, 21-year-old Grace Mullane finally graduated with a bachelor's degree in advertising and marketing. Like most young people around that age, Grace decided that she would celebrate the end of her university education with a gap year before she settled down into a steady career. She decided to take a year out to travel South America before heading to New Zealand to tour there. She set out for a 10-month solo adventure in October 2018. She initially visited Peru before setting off for South America. On November 19th, Grace arrived in New Zealand and she checked into the Base Backpackers Hostel in Auckland, ready for a two-week stay traveling around the Upper North Island. It was in New Zealand that Grace met up with her Tinder match, a 28-year-old man called Jesse Kempston, on December 1st, 2018. Jesse Kempston was born on December 28, 1991, in Lower Hutt, New Zealand, but he grew up in Wellington. His parents split up when he was young, and for a time, he was brought up by his grandparents. He moved to Australia with his mother as a teenager, but by 2016, he was back in New Zealand and living at a boarding house in Wellington. Little did Grace know that Kempson had a more sinister side to him. Jesse was known to be a very charming lad, and he used that to his advantage to manipulate people. Jesse couldn't hold a job or accommodation because of his compulsive lies. On one occasion, Jesse lied to his former landlord that he was a professional softball player freshly signed up by New Zealand's national softball team, the Black Sox, and claimed that his contract money was coming so that he could pay for rent. That went on for two months, only for the landlord to find out from the Black Sox management that nobody knew who he was. Unfortunately, the landlord found out also that he fled to another place without his knowledge, leaving him more than $700 out of pocket. At times, he had also claimed to have a bachelor's degree in international law. He came from a family of millionaires who were looking to buy a top Auckland restaurant, had contacts within Immigration New Zealand, and many other lies he mentioned to people. In reality, Jesse was nothing more than a fantasist who could only impress people with wild lies. His former roommates in a boarding house in Green Lane found him disturbing, untrustworthy, before he eventually moved into city life apartments. On another occasion, one woman he lived with claimed he stole money from her home and fled away again, leaving his city life landlord thousands of dollars down, after Jesse lied that he got paid monthly and still failed to make payments for his rent. Jesse was an enigma to many, lying his way through life and it seemed to work. He also seemed to get away with it time and time again. Back in the hostel where Grace was staying, she was happily conversing with Jesse. The unsuspecting 21-year-old Grace was charmed by Jesse, even sending a text to her close friend, Anna, back home, telling her that she clicked with the guy. Being that it was a Saturday and her 22nd birthday was the next day, Grace didn't want to spend it alone and decided to go out to celebrate. She decided that it was time to meet up with Jesse Kemper. After all, Jesse lived five minutes down the road from where Grace was staying, and they needed to get to know each other a little better. On that particular day when the Tinder matches were supposed to meet, Grace got ready for her big night out and felt nothing other than excitement and optimism for the evening ahead. 
Grace left the base backpackers hostel in Auckland at 6 p.m. and strode out into the city center streets dressed in a black dress, clutching a small handbag, having no clue she was about to have a tragic turn of events. The evening appeared to be going well, and the two visited a bluestone room and left around 9.30, arm in arm. The next day was Grace's 22nd birthday. But Grace wasn't replying to the birthday wishes from family and friends. The silence triggered worry and panic, especially among her family members. It was unlike Grace not to reach out as she would constantly update her family about her trip, and she bombarded them with details and pictures of her adventures. Grace's parents contacted the Auckland police and reported her as missing on December 5th. The detectives didn't initially suspect any foul play. They learned that Grace had not checked back in the hostel on the night of December 1st and thought that maybe she was staying with some new friends. It didn't take long to track down where Grace was on the night she disappeared due to the vast amount of CCTVs from around the city and the mystery man she was spotted with that night was identified as Jesse Kempson. On the night Jesse was going to meet Grace, he dropped by a local bar, the Bluestone Room, right next to the City Life Hotel where he was living. Jesse was seen downing four bottles of beer half an hour before their arranged meeting with Grace, cutting a lonely figure in a drinking house well off the main drag. Grace, meanwhile, was at the base of the Sky Tower early the place they had agreed to meet, showing her anticipation to hopefully start a holiday romance. The Sky Tower is very well known in New Zealand's biggest city and is one of the most obvious icons on the city's skyline, visible for miles around and the focus of many events. Most importantly, it is highly public and the sort of location where Grace would have felt safer to meet someone. As Jesse arrived, the pair recognized each other almost immediately, and he hugged her as she smiled and moved towards him. Their first stop was a burger restaurant and bar on the first floor of the adjacent Sky City complex. Their entire time together at Sky City was caught on camera, and the footage showed them chatting as they went up on an escalator to Andy's Burger and Bar, where they ordered cocktails from a barman and moved on to a table to talk. An hour and a half later, they left the bar and headed back outside and onto a restaurant less than a block away, the Mexican Café. After downing two jugs of margarita and one of sangria, they left the café and headed to the Bluestone Room, where he had been drinking alone earlier. At 8.40pm, Jesse put his hand behind Grace's head and pulled it towards his, kissing her for a second or so. Over the next hour, they kissed several times more, only stopping briefly while Kempson walked out of shot and Grace checked her phone, as it turned out, sending her final message to her friend, Anna. Then Grace also walked out of the shot. Jesse had gone onto his phone to post a message on her Facebook profile picture saying she was beautiful, very radiant, the act that led the detectives right to him. Soon after 9.30 p.m., the footage showed them leaving and heading to the lobby of the City Life Hotel, where they entered the lift. Jesse fumbled for his keycard as they headed towards room 308. What happened in room 308 after the couple arrived wasn't known, apart from the fact that Jesse murdered Grace. However, by 1.30 a.m., Grace lay dead inside the room. What is clear and known is that Grace never left the building and Jesse did not call emergency services or even ask for help when she died. After Grace's death, Jesse carried out several internet searches, which indicated not just how unconcerned he was about her death, but how he was actively plotting to conceal it. Using his mobile phone, he looked up Hottest Fire and Waitakere Ranges, the location where he would later try to bury Grace in a shallow grave. Then, the perpetrator trawled upon website called Pornhub for videos to watch. Jesse also took seven intimate photographs of Grace's dead body, including close-ups, manipulating her body to get the shots he wanted. The following morning, with Grace still lying dead in room 308, he texted another woman he had met on Tinder, trying to arrange a date for later that day. Shortly after, he was again caught on CCTV going from his room to a leisure store to buy the suitcase and then to a supermarket to buy some cleaning products. He then rented a red Toyota hatchback car 
And as Grace lay dead in his hotel room, he headed out in the afternoon to meet up with the woman he had been texting earlier in the day at a bar called Revelry in the trendy Auckland suburb of Ponsonby. The woman, a former journalist who, like the killer, was 28, found her date very intense, quite calm. Soon after meeting her in Revelry Bar, he told her that all his friends were police officers and his closest friend was coming to New Zealand to be a Crown Prosecutor. When they discussed a murder trial she had once attended, he told her, it's crazy how guys can make one wrong move and go to jail for the rest of their lives. He then went ahead to say that he had heard about a guy who asked his girlfriend to have rough sex, but it had gone wrong and she had died in the process which made the woman uncomfortable. Jesse went on with his lies for the rest of the conversation and she became increasingly uneasy when she left the bar. Despite her anxiety, Jesse later texted her asking for another date, which she turned down. After he got back to his room at about 5.45 p.m. on the 2nd of December, he hired a machine called a rug doctor to clean the carpet thoroughly telling the shopkeeper he got it because its purpose was to remove a red wine stain on his carpet. Then he later parked his rental car outside the hotel, picked up a trolley from the reception, went upstairs and returned with the trolley, which was now carrying two large suitcases, one of which was the same as the one he bought earlier. He loaded the cases into the car and moved it to a nearby car park. The silver suitcase contained Grace's body, whilst the second case acted as a cover to avoid suspicion. Throughout the day, the CCTV revealed he changed his clothes repeatedly. Early the next day, at about 6.15 a.m., Jesse was spotted leaving the hotel and driving off in his car, stopping only to buy a shovel at a store out of town, and by that time Grace's parents were concerned after she did not reply to birthday wishes they sent her. Three days later, Grace was reported missing by her parents, and a huge hunt got underway. On the 7th of December 2018, Grace's father, David Mullane, arrived in New Zealand to make an emotional appeal for any information about his daughter's disappearance. Jesse had been identified by a detective as a person of interest after Grace's mother had spotted that he had left a message on her Facebook page at 9.29pm on the 1st of December, just 11 minutes before they left the Bluestone room and went to his room. Jesse was interrogated for the first time by Detective Diana Levinson. Jesse claimed that he had met Grace, but they parted at 10pm on Saturday, and that was the last time he saw her. In the meantime, the detectives had acquired the CCTV footage from the hotel, which proved he was lying. By the time of his second interview, he had no choice but to admit to killing Grace, relying instead on the excuse that she had died during sex by accident after she asked him to choke her in an attempt to make sex more pleasurable. Following the interview, he was arrested and took officers to Grace's body. Grace's body was found on the 9th of December at around 4 p.m. She had been buried off Scenic Drive in the Waitakere Ranges Regional Park, and a post-mortem examination was done on the 10th of December. The autopsy determined that Grace had been strangled, and bruises on her body were consistent with being restrained. The murder trial began in Auckland on November 4, 2019. Kempson attempted to explain Grace's death as being accidental after rough intercourse had gone wrong, but the jury rejected his claim and found him guilty. Jesse Kempson was convicted of murder on the 22nd of November 2019, when he was 28 years old. During his trial, he was described as a sociopath who made some of the women he met or communicated with on Tinder highly uncomfortable. It later emerged that he took another British tourist out on a Tinder date before bringing her back to his Auckland motel room, eight months before he met Grace. Jesse sex assaulted the tourist, then 21, while she lay on the bed crying and frozen with fear after she refused to have sex with him. She kept the attack secret until she recognised Jesse from media coverage the day he was charged with Grace's murder. Another of the women he communicated with on the internet, who was wary of meeting him, shared a series of messages in which he detailed his sexual preferences and admitted to her why he enjoyed doing what he did. It was speculated that it was a desire for domination by Jesse 
that brought about Grace's death. In another trial, he was convicted of terrorizing his former girlfriend over months. He subjected her to violent assaults, threatened her with a butcher's knife, and forced her into humiliating sex acts after telling her he had been sent by the CIA to kill her. Jesse was unwilling to accept what he had done and showed no remorse. On the 21st of February 2020, Jesse was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum non-parole period of 17 years. Grace's story has raised awareness about the importance of safety for travelers, especially young women exploring the world. It has sparked initiatives and support networks to empower individuals and enhance safety measures. As we remember Grace, we honor her memory by advocating for safer travel experiences and raising awareness about the risks that travelers may face. Her legacy serves as a reminder that no one should experience harm while exploring the world. In the end, Grace Emmy Rose Mullane's legacy will be one of remembrance and hope. May her memory inspire us to continue working towards a world where travel is safe and where every individual, no matter where they are, is free from harm and can pursue their dreams.